we have our Angular template driven form here, let's talk about how we can do some validation. We'll do the first and probably most important validation. Let's do required. And that's how we define required. I'm going to break this out into multiple lines now. Now, the way this works is we're going to check for this input and we're going to say if it has errors, then we're going to show an error. And let's do an error here. The way that Bulma handles an error is help is error. Your name is required. So if I save that, this will show. But the thing is, is I only want to show this if they've already typed into it and their name is required, right? Angular has what's called directives where we can say over here, we're going to say ng if only show if this name input has errors. So let's deal with this. And the way we're going to do with this is we're going to create what's called a template variable name input. And this is so that we can reference this input from right here. We're going to say name input is equal to ng model. And what this does is it gives us a little bit of information about this input. So we can say name input dot invalid, then your name is required. So right now, name is required is going to show because this name input is invalid. And then if we start typing Chris, immediately that error message goes away because name input is now valid because we have a name typed into it. All right, this is great and everything, but if I refresh, name is required shows immediately. We only want to show that if somebody's actually typed into it or clicked into it and then clicked away because we know that they have been in the name input box. So we're going to say, and name input is dirty, which means that they were in the input box, had typed a little bit, removed it, and now it is required again. If we didn't want to have the requirement where they were actually typing, we could do touched. So that means they clicked into it, clicked out of it, name is required. So touched is a good one. And the classes that we have, or the states that we have is name input dot valid. And that's if it is valid or invalid. And then on the opposite side, right, is invalid. And then we have dirty, which is have they typed into it and then touched, which is have they clicked into the input box. And then also on the other side is untouched. And these are the kind of states that we have on our name input. And let's do name input. I just want to show off what's in here, errors. So name input that errors is an object, right? And we have this object here. Let's delete all this text, save. And all we have is object. If we want to show an object inside of our template, we have what's called a pipe. And let's say JSON pipe. And this is one that's built into Angular. And now we can see what's in that object. Required is equal to true. And that, since we're typing into it, there are no more errors. So this errors object is null. All right, let's do the same for our email input. We're going to make sure we spread this out. And then it's also going to be required and an email. And then we need to bind a local template variable to this. So we're going to say email input is equal to ng model. Now we can show our help box. So we say div class help is error. And we only want to show this ng if, and that's what's called a structural directive, which means we are going to change this HTML and show and hide it. Thanks to this star, we know that it's a structural directive. So we say email input dot invalid and email input dot touched. So here we'll say your email is required and needs to be an email. There we go. So it is required. So we already fulfilled that part of it, but it needs to be a valid email. So let's say be a valid email. And then let's show off this email input dot errors and we'll pipe it to Jason. All right, so email is true. So type into it required error is gone, but email is also true. So that is going to show this message here. And then you get the gist, you can add it for the message thing. But here, the last thing I want to do is make sure that this button 
is only clickable if our entire form is valid. And to do that, we are going to bind a template variable to our overall form. We're going to say contact form is equal to ng form. And now this contact form variable has all of the features of ng form. Let's go over here. We're going to say contact form dot invalid. Or let's do valid. So right now, is it valid? No, it is not. It's false. So we're going to type into this, type into this. And then as soon as we have a valid email, now our contact form is valid. So I want to bind this variable to this button. So we're going to say, let's take that, remove that. I want to bind the disabled property. And only show disabled if contact form is, sorry, invalid. So when our contact form is invalid, this button is disabled. And that's how we bind to an attribute is these brackets. And that's what's called a property binding. So notice I can't click the send button. I'm going to type Chris, Chris at scotch. And as soon as I start typing a full email, this is valid. And then if I send, we can have this. My message is undefined. My name is Chris. My name, email is chris at scotch.io. All right, that's how we validate our contact form for template-driven Angular forms. I want to take a step back now, and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're going to do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now, modules are going to be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little. Okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports, and you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component, imports are the modules we're importing, providers are services, and bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator, and a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here. We're just adding a decorator here. So this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this users module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now, the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfills, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that. Close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template. And this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even going to need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are going to get output to. And we're going to say, hello, I am an Angular application. 
And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save, and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular, CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack dev server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript, and I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? Well, you can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use. And here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click Save, Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say, component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, okay, well, let's try a component. Okay, so we'll delete that. Component is now normal. No errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you wanna use component? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is gonna be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this, close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components, and all of those get put together to build out our app.